to the July edition of HR Hot Topics. I'm your host, Jody Schaefer, and you're in for a treat this month, folks, because I have another guest with me, the newest member of the HRM team. I have Karen Bedford to my left, and um, I'm really excited for Karen to share her background with you because I feel like Karen fills a niche in our team that we all had some experience with, but this has been like Karen's entire professional career all around talent acquisition, development, culture, employee engagement, coaching. She's a certified disc trainer. I mean, folks, this woman's resume is like <laughs> I, ideal, right? So I'm, I'm really pleased to have Karen join us. I'm going to have her tell a little bit about her background. And then together today, we're going to talk about executive coaching, because if you're watching this, and you're in a leadership role, you know how lonely it can be at the top. And we're so busy juggling the demands of the day and the future for the business and everything our employees need from us. In fact, we spent several episodes talking about how to be there and be everything for your staff. But it's draining and you can't pour from an empty cup, as the saying goes. So we thought this month it would be important to focus on you and things that you can do to help make uh, really impactful change, not just in your personal life and your professional life, but in some of the goals that maybe you have for yourself and how executive coaching can come alongside and help that. So I'm going to kick to Karen here just for her to do a quick bio and then we'll jump into our topic. Well, thank you, Jody. I am really excited to have joined the team here and to be able to bring that background that you mentioned to all of you. I really ha strongly have a passion around culture, leadership development, mm -hmm. and looking at working with individuals to help them reach their goals. Yeah. So let's talk a minute about how executive coaching might be different from leadership training. Well, training focuses on that knowledge transfer and the skills that people need to have in order to do their daily job. But coaching is much more of a focus on behavior change. Mm -hmm. And personalized. Personalized to the individual. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the personal traits that an individual has that they want to expand upon. Mm -hmm. So it's very different than training. Yeah. And I think too, in training, you know, as somebody that does a lot of training, you sort of stand up and you deliver content and there's opportunity to interact with the content and apply it, but it's often done in a group setting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a pretty narrow period of time, even training programs that are academy in nature, you know, over the course of several months, Coaching relationships often are much more long-term. Uh, they go much deeper, mm -hmm. and it really is driven and directed by the person receiving the coaching, which is why it's important that there's a match in terms of the coach you choose and what your goals are, your personality, the approach. There are a lot of different coaching styles mm -hmm. out there. Um, yeah. And I know, Karen, as we were talking, and, and you know, I say this, I say this a lot off camera, but in preparation for these videos, especially when I have a guest, we do a lot of conversation, just as Will, who's behind the camera here, is setting all the technology up. We start talking about, you know, what, what the topic's gonna be and, and, you know, interesting statistics or stories about it. I just, I, I would love one of these times to have you kind of along for the ride, like on our shoulder for some of the kitchen table conversation that happens before this conversation. Yes. But as Karen and I were talking, um, she, she shared with me that her approach is very goal oriented. And she also shared the value of getting feedback from those that work alongside you. So as a leader, right. and, and it could be subordinates, but it could be bigger than that. So talk a little bit about that kind of yeah. 360 feedback loop. So the way that I have utilized coaching is uh, really getting that input from key stakeholders. Mm -hmm. It could be coworkers, yep. it could be subordinates, it might even be community partners. Right. And uh, the individual picks those people out themselves and says, these are the folks that I trust to give me some very valuable feedback. Mm -hmm. And then once we collect all of that data, 
then um, the individual will say, okay, these are the things that I would like coaching on and this is what I wanna work on. And then they also tell their stakeholders, basically number one, thank you for sharing mm -hmm. all of this information with me. And now this is what my commitment is going forward. Yep, so and, that growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so then you work individually with your coach. As you said, it's mm -hmm. um, that dynamic between the individual and their coach. And, but you work with that person to really kind of move the dial and achieve some of the goals that you've set out to, to achieve. Right. So it's directed by you. Uh, but with input from those that work alongside you, perhaps for you, with you, um, and the goal is measurable change, right? Improvement mm -hmm. in the areas that, that you know you want to improve on. But sometimes that feedback is really helpful to kind of narrow the focus because maybe there are five things that if you're being truly honest with yourself, you would list as areas for growth, right? But when you talk to the stakeholders, maybe two of those five are the ones that are getting in your way the most. And maybe you wouldn't have known that, right? So it's a way to kind of focus and prioritize what you want to do and how you want to work with a coach. Because one of the biggest motivators for any of us is progress, right? So when you can start to see that, oh, I'm, I'm aware of something, I'm, I'm creating new patterns to sort of compensate for that, I'm starting to change behavior, and I'm getting a positive response as a result, that's the energy to keep going and maybe to pick the next thing off the list. But that whole um, f gathering of feedback, the how you do that is really important. So as we mm -hmm. said, you know, Karen's like, well, you know, depending on what you read, some people are really in favor of a 360 and some people yeah. say, oh, don't do it. It's a waste of time. But it's in how you implement it. Yeah. And when people can see that you're genuinely interested in your own growth and development, that really resonates with others mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, so this is my time to share this information. I think it will be honored, you know, and, and they'll do something with it. So I think that is really the key to success. Yep. So um, in, in terms of this month and kind of what we want to leave you with, because we always want to leave you with something, Karen and I are going to put our heads together and we're going to come up with, you know, a, a reasonable set of questions that you could use to start soliciting feedback from others. I would caution you um, if you're doing it yourself. It's actually probably better if you're, you partner with, with a third party to administer the questionnaire and to collect the data. Mm -hmm. You really want to just know kind of the, the patterns and the trends and the, the summary of what comes out of it. And so partnering with somebody else to do that will allow you to stay focused on, on your piece and also create perhaps more comfort level with the folks giving the feedback if they know it's not going directly to you first. So we've done that kind of thing for clients. We've administered 360s before. Karen now can just take us that next step of now that you know what you need to work on, here's somebody that can help right? Mm -hmm. Coach you through that more long-term. Yeah. And, and certainly um, there are coaches out there. So we offer this now, but, but that's not really the goal. The goal is for you as a leader to take a breath. A lot's been going on, right? And maybe start to focus on you a little bit because that also helps the team and can help the bottom yeah. line. And I always think of the image that comes to mind is when you're on a plane and they always say you have to put the oxygen mask on you first yep. before yep. you can help those around you. So I think it's really key, especially in this time and uh, what everything that's going on is that you take that time to really think about your own leadership and how it might help the overall organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you focus on yourself. For a little bit so here's your permission to do so if you've been waiting for a sign here it is we're happy to <laughs> we're happy to help in that journey um, one note too while i because i mentioned the fact that karen and i are going to put together sort of this listing of questions that might be a jumping off point for this 360 oftentimes in these videos when we talk about a topic I will include a reference to an article or a template or a sample, right? Last month it was the total compensation statement sample. And those are links. So if you belong to our email list, in the email verbiage that accompanies the video, that's where the links are for the mm -hmm. articles, et cetera. Yeah. 
But if you're watching us on YouTube and you're not on the email list, you're hearing about the idea that there should be a link, but there isn't one on YouTube because they're just that's not how the platform is set up and we can't attach documents or links in that setting. So all of that to say, if you find our information valuable, you wanna learn more, you wanna read a bit more, um, the best way to do it is to join our email list. You can do it on our website, uh, workwithhrm.com. Right at the bottom, there's a link. Click here to subscribe, totally free. We will not spam you. Um, but that's a way to get access to everything mm -hmm. that we do. So I know we're coming up on our, you know, 10 minute mark, which is double what I always tell you I'm going to do, but you know that you've been along for the ride. <laughs> um, and, and we'll welcome Karen. Thank so you. excited to have you and, uh, we'll see you guys next month in August. Have a great summer.